Padma Bhushan, Professor Thomas Kailath is an electrical engineer, information theorist, control engineer, entrepreneur, and the Hitachi America Professor of Engineering, Emeritus at Stanford University. Dr. Kailath received his bachelor's degree from Government College of Engineering, the University of Pune, and his master's and PhD from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and was the first Indian-born student to receive a doctorate in electrical engineering from MIT. He then worked at the Jet Propulsion Labs in Pasadena, CA, before being appointed to Stanford University as Associate Professor of Electrical Engineering in 1963. Later, he was the first holder of the Hitachi America Professorship in Engineering in 1988. He also held shorter term appointments at several institutions around the world, such as UC Berkeley, Indian Institute of Science, Cambridge University, Wiesman Institute, Imperial College, MIT, UCLA, TU Munich, and the list goes on. He assumed emeritus status in 2001, but remains active with his research and writing activities. His research and teaching have ranged over several fields of engineering and mathematics. He was awarded the Padma Bhushan Award in 2009 by the Government of India for his contribution to science and engineering. President Barack Obama selected him for the National Medal of Science along with other prominent scientists for their invaluable contributions. He received the IEEE Medal of Honor in 2007, also the Shannon Award of the IEEE Information Theory Society. Other major honors are the 2009 BBVA Foundation Prize for Information and Communication Technologies, foreign membership of the Royal Society of London, the Indian Academy of Sciences, and the World Academy of Sciences. Thank you. Please give a warm welcome to Professor Thomas Kailath. I request you, sir, to offer your valuable words. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh for the introduction and Dr. Sudha. Uh, can people hear me? Very nice. Yes, sir. Sorry, yes? We can, we can hear you very nicely. Okay, very good. Loud and clear. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's a real pleasure for me to be, uh, you know, talking to you, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> what shall I say? I'm... Uh, not very technolog technologically savvy, so I've relied on other people to help me here. You know, I started my uh, engineering studies in 1953, and uh, then came to MIT. And you know, at those times, and when I came to Stanford later, I had lots of help from uh, what we used to call secretaries. Now we call admins, and my students. So I never really had to uh, worry about getting onto technology. Now, of course, I'm long since retired and uh, I have to struggle to keep up with my younger colleagues here. <laughs> I see Pramod smiling away and he's, uh, if, let me take a few minutes. I remember some years ago, I invited him to come to Stanford to tell us a little more about his work. And I was very impressed that he came with his laptop, which had all the papers and so on from <laughs> not only his. And that continues to amaze me that, you know, what one can do these days. Anyway, let me continue by saying, it is a great pleasure to be here. And uh, first of all, thanks to Dr. Sudha for organizing this event. I was there probably six or seven years ago at the first occasion when uh, there, uh, Dr. Biswa uh, worked with them to organize a conference in Trichu. And, uh, you know, I'm originally from Kerala, at least my parents are, I was born in Pune, but uh, it was a pleasure for me. I can't speak Malayalam, but I can understand. And I heard Alex, uh, I could follow everything he said, and I was pleased to hear Malayalam again, my late wife, of course, spoke fluently, but uh, my current wife is very is a linguist, but uh, speaks several languages, but not Malayalam. Anyway, so uh, Datta and I have, uh, I forget when we first met, but we've had interactions of various kinds, often in person. And I've had the pleasure of uh, learning a little bit about his uh, remarkable life story and I, I'd like to read out some of it to you. Uh, 
because uh, he provided me with some information which I think will be inspiring uh, not only to the students, but to all of us who work uh, in research in engineering and mathematics and et cetera. So uh, I had the privilege of learning first in person at one time and then again recently, something about uh, Dr. Biswa's remarkable life story. So I hope, uh, please indulge me as I take a few minutes to go over this. Dr. Sudha, is that okay? How are you running for time? I think we are okay. We are okay on time today. We expected that everything would be over by 9.30. And after your, uh, your speaking, as also uh, Professor Datta's children, uh, Professor Datta will be responding. And then we can have an open session where you can talk intimately. But right now, I think you should talk whatever you wanted to talk about. Thank you. Uh, because I think it's you shared is really, yeah, yeah. For, for all of us. So Biswa grew up in a very small village in West Bengal, grew up in a very small village in West Bengal in a family of very limited means. He told me that they often had to share their little hut and he might put up a picture of that hut later himself. They had to share their hut with unwelcome visitors of different kinds, big and small, including snakes. <laughs> His village only had a primary school, so for high school, he had to walk barefoot and in the mud to a village about two miles away. Okay. To add to these difficulties, he said that he had the great misfortune, greatest misfortune of losing his mother when he was just nine months old. While his father soon married again, Biswa says he had a miserable childhood. Growing up in extreme poverty with almost no mother in his life. In spite of this, he developed an intense desire for learning. And remarkably, he often had dreams of traveling all over the world as a scientist. Those of you who know Biswa may now believe that if you dream hard enough, your dreams will, may come true. And in fact, in his case, they did. And it reminds me of a movie some of you may have seen in the US at least, in which another driven person was led to build a baseball stadium in a small town. And people wondered, you know, what's going on? Why, why are you doing this? But he said, I was told, if you build it, they will come. So Biswa, he dreamt it and it happened. So his, uh, his passion for and his dream for doing research drove him to get good grades in school. And in time, he applied successfully to a college in a town 15 miles away from his village. He was not sure how he would be able to support himself, but again, fortune favors the brave. He met a rich and kind person who offered him shelter in his own house in exchange for tutoring his three school going children. This was a good uh, start for Biswa because on many later occasions, he supported himself by offering uh, tutoring classes to uh, people who would uh, accommodate him, support him and so on. Okay. Now, uh, he got admission to college, but he was wondering how he would pay the tuition fees. But again, he says a kind doctor in, this, in his town happened in the, where he had gone to study from his village. Uh, he arranged to have, uh, he was on the governing board of the college and arranged to have this was college fails waived. Later he got his excellent grades, got him a fellowship that allowed him to move to the big city of Calcutta, or Kolkata as they call it now, to pursue his studies for a master's degree in mathematics. Okay. Here again, he found himself a tutoring job in a family where he was offered board and lodging for tutoring their children. But that was not enough. He took another tutoring job to pay his college fees and his very modest living expenses. He says he managed with two shirts 
and one pair of trousers, which he had to wash and get ironed on the weekends. <laughs> then he was struck with a personal tragedy. His beloved father died only seven days before the final examination. Okay. Those who are familiar with the, uh, the Indian education system at that time know that all your grades after two or three years in college depend on the final examination. Okay. And here he had to take this exam in a few days uh, while bearing the loss of his father. But his father had told him by the time he went to, uh, he, to go and see him that no, you must focus on this exam. Please take it. Don't uh, pass up this opportunity. Okay. So he did. And he passed in the first class with a first class degree. After this, he took a job in a government college uh, in a city nearby so that following Indian traditions, he could support the family of his stepmother and her two children, as well as the educational expenses of one of his cousins. Very typical for those of us uh, from India. But he sent applications to several colleges in the UK, and he was admitted to a PhD degree at King's College in London. Yet again, though he was initially promised financial support by the college, but after arriving in London, he was denied that support because of a new regulation that the government, the British government had set up for foreign students studying in the country. So this didn't phase him. He took a job, part-time job as a school teacher to support his expenses. And he took all his classes at night, part-time students studying, uh, taking classes at night. But there, another lucky contact led him to apply to McMaster University in Canada. This was a fortunate time because Canada was then, at that time, seeking to encourage the immigration of talented people. So, wonder of wonders, McMaster not only offered him a full scholarship for tuition and living expenses, but they also paid his airfare from London. So he ended up at McMaster and he actually worked, uh, it was, I knew a couple of professors at McMaster, Professor Sinha was one of them. And uh, he, uh, Biswa got his master's degree there and then joined the University of Ottawa where he got a PhD under a well-known numerical analyst the late James Howland. Moreover, in Ottawa, he also met and married a fellow graduate student, now sad to say, his late wife, Karabi Datta. In 1973, Karabi and Biswa moved back to India to work in the gas turbine research establishment in Bangalore. He was promised, uh, you know, this is a, one of the leading research institutions in Bangalore. But as is typical for many jobs in India, so-called research jobs, the job involved more administration than research. And so after some several months of frustration, a mutual friend led him to a position at the State University of Campinas in Sao Paulo, Brazil. You've heard about that and you've, some of his colleagues there have spoken. There they spent four happy years. Uh, Biswa wrote a book in Portuguese, which of course he had to learn. And, and their two children were born there. There he continued his research and he was then nominated by uh, the well-known uh, Professor Hans Schneider, authority in linear algebra, and several other mathematicians for a position at Northern Illinois University uh, there he has, had, or here he is there still, he has had a very distinguished career and now holds the special title of Distinguished Research Professor. But his odyssey, travel odyssey, has by no means ended. In fact, they have expanded. He has taught, at lecture, has taught and lectured at universities and research organizations around the world. 
His mind-boggling list includes more than one visit. To bear with me just another minute, let me read out this list. Australia, more than one visit. Brazil, Chile, China, England, France, Hong Kong, Greece, India, several visits, Mexico, Malaysia, Portugal, Spain, Taiwan, and Venezuela. We heard this morning or today, this evening in India uh, from some of these, uh, his colleagues there. One of his uh, travels and contacts led to a connection some years ago with Vidya University and to Dr. Sudha, who was then still actually working on a PhD degree. And I was, uh, it was a pleasure for me to go back to Kerala at uh, their invitation to speak at Vidya University and uh, meet a number of her young colleagues and so on. She went on to get her PhD and has organized this wonderful celebration for Dr. Biswa today. So before turning the stage back to Dr. Sudha, let me end my remarks with a summary of his own life that Biswa provided. He says that the themes of his life story are the following. So this is for the students and for all of us actually. First, where there is a will, there is a way. Of course, a well-known saying. Secondly, dreams can come true if you wish for them hard enough. And channeling former President Barack Obama, Biswa says, yes, you can. Yes, you can if you try. Thank you, Biswa, for these uh, words and for your wonderful career and your inspiration to colleagues all around the world and especially to the students and uh, faculty and staff at Vidya College of Eng uh, Institute of Technology. Thank you all for your patience with my remarks. Thank you.